Christmas church. We are the Blaze and Miller family. Tonight is the night we all have been waiting for. Please join us this evening in the litany of lighting the Advent candles. Please follow along in the bulletin for the words we will say together at the end. On this holy night, we gather as many as strangers and friends, as the faithful and the wondering. Wherever we are in the world, we gather as many and as one community. We come to seek the light, the hope, the good news on this holy night. We wait for God to come to us again. Church family, our task tonight is to recognize that God chooses to be at home in us. We are invited to accept the gift of Emmanuel, God with us. Let us say together, the, the world becomes flesh and lives among us, full of grace and truth. We light the Christ candle, knowing that Jesus invites us to celebrate hope, love, joy, and peace. Amen.
Good evening, beloved. Welcome to Christmas Eve worship here at the Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church. We are a diverse community of faith where people of faith or no faith at all can come and experience the divine through openness and honesty, through laughter and music, prayer, and of course, worship. We are delighted that you have taken time this evening to join us on Christmas Eve. We pray that you are safe, you have everything that you need. And beloved, during this holiday season, we pray that there have been moments of joy that are filling your hearts. Beloved, if you're seeing me like this, it's because this year has been different. We're not in the sanctuary like we usually are. We're not enjoying the frenzy of this season together. But beloved, I pray that this evening, as you hear the songs that are sung, the prayers that we pray together, the challenging and comforting words of scripture, that beloved, we will take in this story of Jesus's birth as a reminder that we are not alone. So wherever you're taking in this service, whether you're at home, on the couch, whether you're at work listening in, Sit back, hear these words, and may they bring life to your soul. Enjoy the service.
Our reading tonight comes from the Gospel according to Luke. I will be reading from chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. The Greek is translated into English this way. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
Beloved, I'd like to place a tag on this text this Christmas Eve. As the Spirit shall guide, I'd like to speak from this thought. If Christmas could talk. If Christmas could talk. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together virtually. God, we have focused on the gift of music. And now, God, we pray that you might continue to speak to us, continue to challenge us by wrestling with the scripture. Meet us, God, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Amen. If Christmas could talk. Beloved, there is so much that I am excited for in the future when we get the opportunity to get together. And chief among them, if I'm honest, are the Christmas pageants. You know the one. If you've never seen them, beloved, they are a sight to behold. See, they usually are put on by our youth, often our smallest ones, telling us the story of the birth of Jesus. They are sharply dressed as shepherds. There are those who are adorned as angels. They tell us which animals may have had a front row seat. There are some of them who are decked out as astrologers and kings from the east across ancient Palestine. But, beloved, I, I have to admit, it's usually Mary and Joseph for me. It, it's the reimagining of these first time parents, migrants, if you will, displaced by a policy of the empire that has always fascinated me as we reenact this scene of the birth of this revolutionary from Nazareth. But this year, when I understand that it's only my job to tell the story and get out of the way, I have to point out something incredible about what is said to a group of people that I have to admit I sometimes overlook, and that is the group of shepherds. Beloved, think about it. An, an angel takes their time to go specifically to them in the pastures as they rest, jolts them awake and says, I've got some good news of great joy for all the people. Now, beloved, you know that I perked up when I read those words, good news of great joy for all the people. After the year that we have had, we all need all the good news that we can get. So I asked the text, what is the good news for all the people? And here's what the text said to me. Text said, Rev, sit back because I'm going to show you what Christmas would say if it could talk. Beloved, for just a few moments, may I share with you what Christmas would say if it could talk. Beloved, Christmas, I would suggest, first of all, would say that I am a reminder that revolutions are divine moments to reorient 
unjust systems. See, I know that we love the decorations. I know that we love our Christmas CDs bumping in our homes. Fantasia's is one of the best top five. Please email me if you disagree. But in case, beloved, you've ever wondered, Christmas wants us to know that it's a story about revolution. When Luke writes this story, he has in mind devastated people. He has in mind people who have seen the temple of God burnt down by the Roman Empire. He has in mind people who have been shunned because of their ethnicity, discriminated against because of their gender, and ignored and neglected because they are poor. And he wants them to know that when the forces of this world try to define you by your proximity to power, remember that God comes to the people and not the palace. Beloved, the angel comes to the shepherds to let them know that Jesus is the Messiah. That term, that word Messiah, that would have set off an alarm for those shepherds. It may not mean much to some of us, but beloved, it's a term that would have let them know that there's a revolutionary leader coming to bring this empire down. And that's good news when an empire is a police state killing your people without impunity and some refuse to imagine a world without them. That's good news when the empire reduces your worth to how much you can produce and add to its global wealth. That's good news when the empire thrives on domination and power. Beloved, I need you to hear this. Messiah is a word that people kept tucked in their hearts as a reminder that there was always going to be a revolutionary strain fighting and resisting and pushing the world to work for all of God's children. And so the angel lets the shepherds hear the good news that all of the people need to know that revolution has been born again this day. And Christmas wants us to know that when you see rebellion against oppressive governments, when you hear of protests in the streets, when you hear calls to dismantle systems, when you hear reimagining of our economic systems or public safety, y'all, that just means that there's Christmas in the air because that's what Jesus represents. But that's not all, beloved, because if Christmas could talk, not only would it proclaim that revolutions are divine moments to reorient unjust systems, but after reading Luke's story, beloved, I believe that if Christmas could talk, it would tell us that Jesus is a reminder that God is not afraid to step into the messiness of our lives. Come back with me to the text. I need everyone at home right now to, to, to use your imagination. Remember, beloved, Jesus is born where the animals are kept, and after he's born, he's placed in a manger. 
okay, um, we may not know what a manger is in 2020, wherever you may be. Um, a, a manger, beloved, is this long box. Some call it a trough where, where horses or cattle go in to eat. And beloved, I believe that I can say without fear of contradiction that anyone who has spent time on farms knows that those things smell. Y'all, y'all, anyone who has spent time with or, or near large animals knows that there are some wild noises and some um, scents that make it real difficult to be around them for a long time. And beloved, Luke tells us that when God breaks into the world in human flesh, God chooses to show up in a manger. Y'all, it, it, it does not get more real than a manger. And all I came to share this Christmas Eve with someone is that God who is, be, who is willing to be born in some mess is willing to show up and deal with ours. Beloved, I kept asking this question. Why is Jesus' birth good news to all the people? And the answer seems to be that not only is it that he's the Messiah, but it's also that he's not draped in royalty, but rather is found in the messiness of the manger, like he shows up in the messiness of our lives. And I can't tell you how much my spirit shouted when I heard the ancient testimony remind me that God chooses her earthly debut in some mess. Beloved, that, that, that makes me happy because if 2020 has been anything, I know this is a kid-friendly service, but uh, let's just say it's been some mess. There's been the mess of this pandemic called COVID-19 and the disastrous negligent handling by the outgoing administration. There's been the mess of this outgoing presidency exposing America for what it is, tethered to the myth of white supremacy and worshiping at the altar of capitalism and more dedicated to being a police state than to reimagine what life can be. This year has been a mess. The mess of public lynchings and murders in homes like Breonna Taylor's a mess that sparked the largest sustained protest this nation has ever seen. And so many of us are fed up at the disregard for black and Latinx life. Y'all, it was a mess of an election, a mess when 45 would not accept his defeat. And y'all, we can be honest tonight, it is a mess that we can't be where we want to for Christmas with family, maybe out of town. Some of us spending Christmas like we are for the first time and we're left dealing with the mess of our emotions. Y'all, the audience receiving this story 
And the shepherds in our text are intimately aware how messy the manger is. And here's the message Luke is trying to get them to hear. Y'all, there's no mess. God is unwilling to roll up her sleeves and get in with you. So if Christmas could talk, Christmas would speak to our souls. This has been a messy year. Our lives may feel like a mess. You may have looked like a hot mess once or twice this year, but whatever mess you find yourself in, beloved, Christmas says God is not scared. God says, I came in a manger to let everyone know who's ever been left out, who's ever felt forgotten, who's ever been marginalized, that I can handle your mess. Merry Christmas, beloved. May the Lord bless you real good. But whatever your mess is, whatever your struggle is, Christmas says God is there with you and the manger is all the proof you need. I don't know about you, but that's mighty good news. Merry Christmas. Beloved, here is an awesome opportunity for us to continue to sustain this incredible ministry and church. Through our time of offering, beloved, we invite you to give as you're able. We know that this year has made uh, a big dent in a lot of our households. Things have radically shifted for many of us. And if you're able, we pray that during this Christmas season, you might give to a church that is not only dedicated to sustaining the ministries of this church within our four walls, but also meeting the needs of those outside of our church as well. You're giving tonight to a church dedicated to restructuring the way that the world works. So we invite you to give in a few easy ways. You can first click on the donate button if you go to our Facebook homepage. Wherever you're watching this service, you can go to the description and click on the giving link right there. You can make your way to our website, lapcbrooklyn.org, and click on the donate button in the upper right-hand corner. Or you can even go through your banking institution. You can sign up to be a monthly giver through your banking institution or you can even send in a regular old check. However we decide to give, we invite you to give in a spirit of gratitude, and we too are grateful for you. Let us give led by our ministry of music.
beloved, light is a central image in our faith tradition. It tells the story of paths being illuminated. It tells the story of God's presence. It tells the story of Jesus. This moment in this service each year brings us so much joy. Sit back, hear these words, sing along with us, and may God's light meet you where you are. Merry Christmas. In our own lives, we are seeking light. In our neighborhoods, we are seeking light. In our families, we are seeking light. In our work, we are seeking light. In grace, we are seeking light. In our nation, we are seeking light. In our world, we are seeking light. In a little town known for nothing much, God's holy child was born. Welcome the light. By the faint light of the moon, Mary and Joseph found their way. Welcome the light. Shown by a courtyard fire, the open stable door. Welcome the light. There, Mary gave birth to Jesus, called God with us. Welcome the light. Angels opened the doors of heaven, saying, Glory to God in the heights. Welcome the light. And on this Christmas night, with joy, we greet the child. Welcome the light. Jesus is born. Jesus is born in us today. Jesus, the light of the world.
Beloved, we want to say thank you to all of you joining us this Christmas Eve for this service. We appreciate you sharing it with family and friends as we have celebrated the arrival of Jesus together. To the family that led us in the lighting of the Advent candle and the Christ candle this evening, the Blaze and Miller family, we say thank you. To our liturgist, Carla Cook, who blessed us with her voice and her presence. To our incredible music ministry, all of the choirs that joined together, the Lafayette Choir and the Inspirational Ensemble, to our carolers, to uh, our director of music, J. David Williams, alongside the director of our inspirational ensemble, Janice Russell. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. And to those behind the scenes, behind the cameras who brought this service to us, to Michael Craig, Daniel Ortiz, Clint Robinson, we appreciate you and thank you for all that you do. Let us receive our benediction. May the arrival of Jesus, the arrival of hope and love, joy and peace, remind us that we are never alone. May this Christmas be exactly what you need. May it bring love that overwhelms your life. May it hold you and keep you now and always. Amen.